Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Hope everybody is doing well. As always, want to give thanks to everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon, where there's exclusive videos every week. Indeed, we certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. And everything old is new again and vice versa. Look at Elon here. El Elyon himself sporting the, well, I guess modern Roman attire. Look what he puts out there. SPQR. You remember, Elam was put in Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is Latin. Why do we use Latin? It's a dead language, right? Yet it's at the foundation of our medical jargon. It's Latin. And even when we go into, you know, so much to do with law, uh, it's, it, it again reverts to Latin. It's because ultimately what we take as Latin and Roman is ultimately originating with the system that's been in effect for thousands of years. This kind of say, says everything, doesn't it? Uh, Novus Ordo Seclorum. And this reference right here is a Roman reference. Uh, we see Baron Trump. Baron Trump. They tried to assassinate you. They failed. They tried to charge you falsely. They failed. Now you are here, Dad, the 47th president of the United States of America. Congratulations, Trump. As you see Barron towering above his six foot three dad. Yes, we do shrink with age. You know, it's just par for the course a little. Uh, yet, how tall is he? Six nine, six ten. Uh, how tall will he be? What What is up with his genetics? Is it on Melania's side? Uh, what's going on here? Well, you know, all the Trumps seem to be a little bit tall, but we've gotten that there's more than that when, you know. We'll, we'll talk about that on a Patreon exclusive because Baron is unique in more ways than one. And this is a bust. No, it's not Anakin Skywalker. It is a Roman emperor. In fact, the first real Roman emperor. This is Octavian or Caesar Augustus, as you see him shrouded uh, here. And this is a depiction here of uh, Octavian as well. For the last decade of the first century BCE, found in the Aegean Sea. So it should be pretty similar, right? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus, bon, born Gaius Octavius, back in the 23rd of September, 63 BC. And so he died August of uh, the year 14, AD 14. He was known as Octavian, was the founder of the Roman Empire. Yeah, you know, again, you have Julius Caesar that gets the most notoriety. But in fact, you know, Julius ended up being, uh, well, assassinated by everybody, including Brutus and, and those that he thought were his friends. Uh, what really set Octavian apart was his ability to rule with an iron fist, but in a much more wise way. And so he really consolidated things. And he really set in place uh, an empire that was going to last a long time. And also one that was free of armed conflict, even though it was ruled truly with a iron fist. So you could look at this as being perhaps, um, and I don't think most historians would argue, this was the most successful Caesar. And again, Caesar... Uh, is is an interesting word in and of itself. You know, again, it's a dictatorship is what we have here. An absolute dictatorship. And he was probably uh, definitively the best uh, from that standpoint of consolidation of power and ruling for a very long time. He died at the age of 75. He was, in fact, given the title Augustus, which means the respected one. And in fact, we have two more months that we didn't have at one point in time. Isn't that interesting? July after Julius and, and August after Octavian Augustus here. Mm -hmm. Interesting that you have people that are so significant, you have months named after them. This 
look at this this is AI doing a recreation of Augustus so this is an AI recreation of what the greatest Roman em Emperor looked like well not really imposing I mean he looks very very average I, I think so he is you know looks quite gentle really I that's what I think I mean just somebody there the eyes don't look horrible he doesn't look overbearing none of that no Tiberius looks a little bit rougher and more intense and 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 uh, in fact this AI program has given us uh, all the Roman emperors it's very very interesting to look at them all um, and with Augustus, uh, he ruled perhaps more wisely than any of the others. Uh, the length of his reign would definitely speak to that. But as you, as you allude to, doesn't feel quite so evil. But he is kind of familiar. Doesn't he feel familiar? Does he feel familiar to you guys? Um, search into the energy, as we've said before. There is this correlation, uh, energetic correlation uh, with uh, Baron and Octavian. At least I, I have it very, very strongly. I feel it, and I think Cindy does too. Yeah, I feel it too. She feels it too. In fact, you know, what's interesting is in the channeling that Cindy's been able to do, she has been able to feel that um, 45 and 47 feel that Baron is is the most important thing. This is one of the things she's picked up, uh, that he is the most important thing uh, in some ways to President Trump. Now, that's not surprising for a father to, to look at his son in that way, right? I mean, that would be a natural thing. I would think so, yeah, yeah. But, you know, maybe not uh, Don Jr. or any of the other kids, but really Baron is the focal point. When we look to Rome, we think of the eagle. The eagle in uh, a wreath that looks like the wreath uh, that's placed as the crown on the Roman emperor's heads. Uh, again, this is very, very symbolic. The eagle, right? Legion legions of Roman soldiers you know the Roman Empire again what it would do is move into an area conquer the area and then install as part of the uh, control system usually local r people that would be loyal to Rome and then they would pay tribute and send off you know their tithes to Rome and so they would let people kind of rule themselves and become part of the empire as long as, again, uh, they abided by the laws and legislation of the empire. And it's so e interesting to see the symbolism, again, of the eagle. And, oh, wait a minute, isn't this what Elon was doing? SPQR, yeah. SPQR, Novus Ordo Seclorum. You know, again, there's nothing new about this. This is all part of the same control system that's been in place for thousands of years. Thousands of years. And I think this photo says a lot. Here you have uh, a proud papa, and you have Baron, already uh, much taller than his dad. Melania looks tranced out. It's not her best photo, and it almost looks like her pupils are going straight up and down to me a little bit. Uh, y yeah, yeah, we can't really zoom in too much more, but there's those eagles. Hey guys, there's the eagles. Look at those eagles. Go eagles. Go eagles. Wait a minute, that they just about look identical, don't they? That's the Roman eagle, and that's our U.S. eagle. It's one and the same, and ultimately it comes from here. And this is really what we are seeing represented. Uh, Novus Ordo Seclorum really is just a, it's just a new rehash of the same, same old. As you could see here, again, the depictions of humanoid beings up in the sky, flying about. There's kind of that circle. And it, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's a window dressing. It's a window dressing. At the same time, uh, during the reign of, of Caesar Augustus, 
I, I would venture to say that many people thought it was relatively tranquil and, and were relatively content inside the Roman Empire. But here you have that symbolism, that symbolism. And then even going back to the Ingersoll Lockwood um, books, uh, we talked about this in 2017, 20, 2017. Um, I did. Vi I know I did more than one video on this, and I had uh, mentioned because somebody said, "Did you ever see this?" And said, "Oh yeah, we did a video on that like seven years ago." Well, those videos aren't there anymore. I was searching for them. I can't find them, so they were taken down by the system. Um, when you look to this 1893 depiction of Baron Trump, and here is Baron Trump. <laughs> you kid you not. This has led to so much speculation of time traveling. The Baron Trump novels are two children's novels written in 1889-1893 by American author and lawyer Ingersoll Lockwood, who is interesting in and of himself. Uh, and then the very, very famous 1900 or The Last President. Um, there was even a play. I kid you not. So... It is interesting. I mean, I, I bought these books. We have the complete works of Ingersoll Lockwood, and, and I went through them and read them back in that time. I think I did it in a sitting, pretty much. Um, it was fun. It was very, very fun and very, very interesting because, you know, it foretells a time of, of civil war coming. And it's interesting in, in, in the book, you know, again, civil war, Baron Trump this is just wild right and so you have people that think what's going on here and even more than this um there's so much eerie <laughs> eeriness going on with this so here are a few oddities 13 theories and creepy predictions about donald trump and his son baron from two different 19th century books baron trump the character is a lot like Baron Trump. The only difference is one extra R there. The real-life son of the president. They might not look exactly like twinsies in the sketch above, and they spell their names slightly differently. But both are wealthy young men who have similar living arrangements. Baron Trump lives in Castle Trump. Trump Castle. Trump, yeah, isn't that interesting? And Baron Trump grew up in Trump Towers. Coincidence? I think not. In the book, the character Baron has a very active brain. He's grown bored of his luxurious lifestyle. He goes on an adventure in Russia. Yes. In the book, Baron, remember, uh, not Baron, goes on an adventure in Russia to look for an entrance into an alternate dimension that ultimately changes his life. Did Donald send Baron to do his bidding during the campaign? Are we pointing the finger at the wrong adult? We should be pointing at an 11-year-old uh, yeah, right. Making fun of the whole Russian collusion thing. In Russia, he is guided by a master named Don. We kid you not. While in Russia, Little Adventures Baron is guided by Don, a.k.a. the master of all masters. Uh, the last president begins with an unlikely pres presidential candidate winning the election. Story is set in New York City. Where is Trump from? New York City. Trump Towers. Yeah. Early November, with the city in a state of uproar after an enormously opposed outsider candidate is elected president. Sound familiar? Police officers shouting through the streets, warning city folk to stay indoors for the night. Mobs of vast size are organized under the lead of anarchists and socialists and threaten to plunder and despoil the houses of the rich who have wronged and oppressed them for so many years. The book mentions the address where a certain Trump building now stands. The novel predicts that fifth, the Fifth Avenue Hotel will be the first target of the mob against the newly elected leader. The address of that hotel, which is written in the book, is the exact address where Trump's story stands. I don't know about you. Serious goosebumps there. People protest the election process in the book after the unpopular president is elected. Resistance is formed. People start protesting what they believe to be an unjust and corrupt election. Hmm. And there's a Pence reference, too. In the book, there's a character named Lafay Pence, who is the Secretary of Agriculture. Remember old VP Mike Pence. So people think this is more proof that Donald Trump and Barron Trump are t 
time travelers. Ah, are they time travelers? Yeah, you know, it's just very interesting a connection to Tesla as well. Yeah, you know, again, George, John George Trump, Donald's uncle, overlooked the famous engineer Nikola Tesla's notes after his death, which included thoughts on time travel. National Defense Research Committee actually called Trump, who was an MIT professor, to look into his work in case there was any military application. He spent three days by himself, they say, looking into the notes before concluding there was nothing of any significance. And, by the way, Donald did spend a lot of time with his uncle before he died, just before he died in 18, 1985. Yeah, Donald spent a lot of time with his uncle John, who would often warn him about nuclear weapons. He would tell me, there are things that are happening that could be potentially so bad for the world in term, uh, terms of weaponry. He also said that his uncle would tell me many years ago about the power of the weapons someday, that destructive forces of these weapons would be so massive that it's going to be a scary world. Well, you know, again, Donald, if I remember right, was born in 1945. So, I mean, he was a baby when uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki ha happened. So, you know, uh, that sounds a little bit off to me, too. You know, it's just fascinating to see all this. It is fascinating to see all this. And when I look at the representation here, of again Caesar Augustus and I th think of Baron Trump and you see all the connections I just gotta say I, I think that he is um, the one that they have penned to be the first empire uh, first emperor of a new empire perhaps in a certain timeline at least as we all know there are many timelines that are always competing each other with each other to be the dominant timeline and uh you know not a good picture of melania there poor thing <laughs> she's having a bad day you know those darn cameras um you know you look at it and you look at things in a cyclical nature because that's how uh this universe operates is in cycles and uh, you know, we have the opportunity here in our lives with the short lives that we have cyclically, uh, we work around and around and around. And many times we get a do over and the same things keep occurring to see have we mastered this? Are we ready to move on? But that's also in, in a very, very uh, a big way as well. I mean, to me, to me, this looks very cyclical in nature with Baron being another start of another uh, type of rulership or another type of government that might be coming into play on this planet. You know, I can't say that I agree or disagree with anything because I think we should be able to govern ourselves. But um, it is interesting. I mean, I really do enjoy alignment. Alignment is fun for me when we watch people work on people. And then they go through these amazing experiences in their lives when it comes to do with healing and getting another opportunity to do things over. Uh, that just fascinates me. So in that sense, this is fascinating to me. Yeah, because again of our conditioning, both political and religious, all we can think of is a person uh, having power, a, a single entity being at least the figurehead of power or what have you or divinely uh, appointed to be the ruler but the reality is in, in when we go into a golden age or even a silver age there is no dictatorships there are no dictatorships and uh, the higher densities when you're looking at fifth density and above there is no dictatorship it, it, it's not one entity ruling it's not any one party ruling it's not any any particular uh, set of rulers coming on down this is all the programming of the system itself to get people to accept giving their power away and and that just is not the case when we are in the higher densities in fact it, it couldn't be any farther from that situation
I, I agree. I, and I think there's many ways we can sit here and live our own lives and still not give our power away. We can be true to ourselves. It just, you know, the information that's out there and the, the laws that they have in place makes it a little bit difficult. But I, I don't think we should ever limit our thinking. We can do what we want. We can live the way we want. It's It's up to us. And sometimes we have to work through some traumas to do that. Absolutely. As always, guys, look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for your support. Come join us on Patreon again. A dollar a month uh, or one dollar menu item less a, a month. And it does support the channel. It supports the awakening so we can shift into a much better timeline. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.